Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family. Happy St. Patty's Day. It'll be here this weekend and I am excited about this cake that I want to show you that I'm going to make. I've already showed you the Guinness Irish Stew that we made and the Cold Cannon. Guys, you have got to try that if you haven't. Get you a scoop of that Cold Cannon in your plate, your bowl. Put you a ladle full of that stew on top of it. Oh my goodness, it is out of this world delicious. I want to start out today before I show you the cake and how I'm going to do it by thanking every one of you for all the well wishes um, for me and my health. I'm getting better and um, I, I think I'm ready to get back into the game again. And I have received cards from several of you and it means the world to me. It really does. I even had a lovely subscriber from Texas, Janice, you're amazing, send me this. Isn't it beautiful? And it looks to me like she made it and that means more to me than anything. That is just absolutely beautiful and artistic for me. So I'm going to sit it up here where I can look at it while we're baking. And uh, I want to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make us a Guinness chocolate cake. And I'm taking a shortcut, and all of you know, most of you know, I like shortcuts. There's so many of us that we don't have a lot of time when we come in from work in the afternoons. We've got children to take care of, or we've just had a long, busy day. We want something, but we just don't have a lot of time to spend making it. So we take shortcuts and there is nothing wrong with that. If you've got to, the time, make it from scratch. I do a lot, but I also like to show you the shortcuts. And this cake, I'm using a cake mix. It's a devil's food cake mix. There is nothing wrong with these cake mixes. They have everything done and measured for you. You don't have to think about it. So we're just going to go by the directions on the package with one exception. Now, my oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I have prepared two nine-inch pans. I used um, a baking spray, you know, that has the flour in it already. Um, honestly, guys, I tried to find my eight-inch pans because I wanted a little taller cake. But since we've done this remodel and I've had to pack everything up to do it, I don't know where I put them. I'll find them one day. So I'm using the nine inch pans and that is going to be great. So in this bowl, I put the cake mix and I am going to add a half of a cup of cooking oil. Use a non-flavored oil, vegetable oil or canola oil and um, Honestly, you can use, and here's a little tip for you. In place of oil, most of the time I put butter. I would use half of a cup of butter. So, but I'm not going to do that today. But we've got three eggs. I want to put three eggs and their room temperature. I set them out this morning so they'd be room temperature for us. And I'm going to just break that egg right into this bowl. So let's get all of them in here. Now, this is going to be one amazing cake. Oh, that was a double yolk. Can y'all believe that? I haven't seen a double yolk egg in quite a while. I love to get double yolks. That one's not. <laughs> Let me rinse my hands. I got raw egg on them and um, I just like to rinse my hands when I do that. Okay, so, and the cake mix calls for a cup of water, a half of a cup of oil and three eggs. Well, I've got the oil and the eggs, but in place of the water, I'm using a Guinness 
stout. And that's going to be our liquid. So I'm making it a Guinness chocolate cake. And I am just going to use my, now we're not beer drinkers. <laughs> so I had to buy this to make the cake, but the alcohol cooks out, remember that. So I'm going to mix this up. I'm just going to use my hand mixer today. Start out slow because I don't want to sling that all over my kitchen, y'all. I spent time to cleaning it up and I don't want to do it again. And I know you don't either. So let me get this mixed up. And I'll be back with you in just a minute, okay? Okay, I have let this mix for a couple of minutes. And it is a beautiful, beautiful batter. Now, I don't need these beaters anymore till we make the frosting. We are making it from scratch. So I'm going to put these in the sink so I can wash them. And I got chocolate on my hands. Okay, so now I am going to, I've got my prepared pans. And I am going to try to get this as evenly distributed as I can in these pans. So I'm going to spread that out. you see what I'm doing here? So I want to get all this goody off of my spatula there. That's a, that's a nice bite of cake waiting, right? I don't want to leave it on there. So let's give it a little taste. Mmm. And you know what? You can't really taste that it has beer in it. It just enriches, deepens that chocolate flavor. So I dripped a little bit right there on the side of my pan. So I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm going to get these in the oven. And it tells me to bake them for 29 to 33 minutes. So... I'm going to get them baked and I'm going to let them cool and then I'm going to come back and we're going to make some icing and we're going to frost this cake and make it beautiful. Our cakes are finished baking. I've had them out cooling. Look at that beautiful chocolate layer. Now, if you want a taller, thicker layer, use an 8-inch pan. I just, I told you I couldn't find my 8-inch, so I used my 9, but that's going to be perfect. Now, we want to make some frosting. I'm going to make a buttercream frosting. And I have two sticks of butter, softened butter, and my bowl here. Y'all, yeah, my bowls are all in the dishwasher, so I'm using this big one. Um, but I have two sticks of softened butter here, and I've kind of just whipped it up a little bit. Now, I'm going to add three cups of powdered sugar. I'm not going to sift it. I'm just kind of lightening it up with my measuring cup here. So, three cups. Two and three. It's gonna be so good. I've melted some chocolate, some semi-sweet chocolate with a little bit of cream to make a drizzle to go on top, but you'll see that in just a minute. So let's mix this up just a little bit. And we I've got a couple of tablespoons of cream measured out here, heavy whipping cream, and we're going to drizzle that in. Now, I'm, remember, I'm making a frosting, so I don't want it too thin. I want it thick enough that when I frost this cake, it's going to stay on it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with these two tablespoons but we have more to add if we need it. And I think we're gonna need it. But before I put more, I want to mix it up. I'm going slow with this mixer because I don't want to wear this powdered sugar. I am gonna have to have more. So let's check that with our 
I think it's still a little too thick for my liking. I'm going to add just another drizzle. That was maybe a teaspoon. That's much better. I'm going to add just a touch of vanilla because I want a little bit more flavor to it. And I'm going to use some vanilla bean paste. That might have been about a teaspoon. So let's mix that in. Won't take but a minute. Oh, and it's so pretty. Those little specks in that white frosting. All right. There we go. Now, let's frost this cake. I have got my one layer and I've got it upside down on my on my pan here. Can you see what I'm doing? I need to move some of this stuff out of your way. Close up my milk because if I knock it over, I don't want to spill it everywhere and I'll get that in the refrigerator in a minute. Okay, so I am going to put a good bit of frosting right here. And with my offset spatula, I'm just going to spread it all around this top layer. Now, if you want really a lot of frosting, I use three cups of powdered sugar. You can make a lot more. You make whatever you want. Use your favorite frosting. If you want to even use the store-bought frosting, go for it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm going to take this other layer and put it right on top. And you know, if it's not perfect, it's, this one's not perfect. It doesn't matter. It's the taste that matters. Okay, so I am going to put... Move that for just a minute. I'm going to put a nice big blob on top of this. Because what we're going to do when we frost it, and I know you guys know this, but we're going to pull it down from the top. That's loud, isn't it? We're going to pull it down from the top onto the sides of our cake. But I want to get more frosting on the top than I do the sides. There we go. Looky there. See, and I'm just taking and pushing it. See how I'm doing? And then just work it on down on that cake. And I am not worrying about full coverage on the sides. I've got the frosting that I want in the middle and on the top. A little crumb broke off. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. After I dropped it. Mmm. Oh my goodness, y'all. I know y'all have heard the term before on cakes, a naked cake. And basically, you know what that means is the frosting is spread very thin. And you can see some of the cake layers through that frosting like you can see right there on the side of mine. And uh, it's almost kind of like what I'm going for. Because like I said, I want my frosting on the top and in the middle. So let me get this finished and I'll come back. Look here at this cake, y'all. I think this is just absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if you can tell from there the specks from the vanilla beans that are on this cake. That's beautiful. You see, I kind of spread it a little thinner on the sides. Let's see if I can get it up here where you can see it better. It's spread it a little thinner on the sides than it is on the top. Now, I melted some chocolate with a little bit of cream. I have four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. 
and I use a um, quarter of a cup, I'm sorry, half of a cup of heavy cream and I melted it. Now I did put it in the refrigerator, cool it down to let it thicken up. Here's what we're gonna do. Can you see? I'm gonna start with that right now. We'll probably add more. Look here. Can you see how beautiful that is? Push it out to the edge. And we just want it to run down ever so lightly down the side of this cake. Isn't that beautiful? That is a beautiful sight. I think Pop Jones is going to enjoy this cake. He was just saying a couple of nights ago he wished he had a chocolate cake. Look at there. Let's go ahead and put the rest of it on here. We want a nice drizzle, don't we? Looky there. Is that not pretty? Look at that beautiful cake. Looky there. You see that drizzle coming down? Now I'm going to make a place in my refrigerator and I'm going to set this in the refrigerator and I'm going to let all that chocolate set up and harden. And after that happens, I'm going to come back and we're going to cut us a piece and we're going to try it. Yeah, before I put this in the refrigerator, I want to show you what I've got here. I have some um, decorations that I ordered off of Amazon. But I've got these cute little clovers and these little rainbows. And so they've got the, the dust on them. But I'm just going to lay them on top right there. Let's decorate it up. What do you say? Looky there. And we've got these little beads. And we're going to put them around. Let's make it pretty. Now, what do you think about that? I just love it. So I'm going to get this in the refrig refrigerator. And I'm going to let it sit up. And I thought I might wait for Pop Jones. But you know what? I don't know that I can wait. I want to let this sit up. And then we're going to try it, okay? Yeah, I couldn't wait. I have had this chilling for a few minutes, and I just wanted that ganache to set so it wouldn't keep running off, and it didn't. It was, it was thick enough, but I want to try this cake, and I can't wait to cut into it. Oh, it's so soft. I can feel it now. I can tell how soft it is. Oh, it's going to be so beautiful. <laughs> Looky here. Can you see the frosting between that layer? Looky there. Let's try it. I can't wait to, to give this a try, but I've got to have some of the ganache and the frosting with it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. The stout in there, you cannot taste it at all. You cannot tell that I put a Guinness stout in there. It kind of just deepened that chocolate flavor. And it was it was a devil's food cake to begin with. But that stout just made it even, I don't know how to describe it, richer. It just deepened that chocolate flavor. Mmm. Now. Mm-mm-mm. I wish Stephanie was here to try this cake with me because I know she would love it and I know 
Pop Jones is going to enjoy this tonight. I hope you will make this cake. And if you do, let me know what you think about it. I'm going to sit it up here and let you look at it. Let me know what you think about it. And let me know that you made it. And I certainly appreciate each and every one of you. And again, I want to thank everybody for all their well wishes, their prayers, their thoughts when I was going through my little health issue. And um, my family's been right here for me. You guys have all been here for me. And I certainly appreciate it. And don't forget, if you haven't, order your cookbook. And I'm working on another one, and um, I think this recipe is going to go in it. Go to KarenJonesFoodAndFamily.com and follow the link. It'll take you away from my webpage, but I promise you it is a very safe site. It goes directly to my printer. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And we hope to see you soon. We so enjoy having you in our kitchen.